Excited to be here in this special dinner here um, at Masa Lowe's and working with one of the tribes. I grew up on Pine Ridge Reservation, so I'm enrolled with the Oglala Lakota Sioux Tribe. I was only 13 when I started working restaurants. I did that all through high school, college, and after college I moved to Minneapolis, and then I worked my way up to a chef really quickly because I had a lot of years of experience already. It was a few years into the chef career that I just realized the complete absence of indigenous foods out there. Even though I grew up on a tribal community, I knew very little about my own like Lakota ancestry when it came to food. It just really made me look uh, deeper as to what happened to us as indigenous peoples. What are our food systems? What were our ancestors gathering, hunting, foraging? What was their knowledge of plants around us? Looking at all this through kind of a culinary lens, and then just realizing why this is really important to get out there, looking at a lot of the health crises that we, sh that we share as indigenous peoples across the board, a lot of type 2 diabetes and obesity, a lot of poor nutritional access, a lot of us still stuck on commodity food programs, and just trying to figure out a way to showcase modern indigenous foods that could really curb a lot of those health pieces. I started my company, The Sioux Chef, in 2014, and I've been able to travel to almost every state, including a lot of Mexico and Canada and Alaska, and just really focus on what are North American indigenous foods. Coming up with an idea for a restaurant to showcase what's possible with modern indigenous foods, at the same time setting up a nonprofit to become a support center to help see more and more development around indigenous foods on a larger scale. So Awamani, we opened in 2021 in July and we've been sold out every single night since we opened and it's really just a proof of concept that we can have a nice restaurant that's got a lot of intention that is focused on just the decolonization of what we're doing. Because we're at a nice restaurant, we get to make the plates look pretty and we get to tell a story through these foods. showcasing what's possible out there and it's really great to be able to have a restaurant where you can see a lot of indigenous peoples serving the food, cooking the food, you see indigenous language on the menus, you hear indigenous music over the speakers and it's just a different feel that you know we should have these restaurants all over the nation. We just won this year's James Beard Award for best new American restaurant in the entire nation. The nonprofit is Natives, which is that acronym, North American Traditional Indigenous Food Systems. And through Natives, we have a nonprofit kitchen in Minneapolis called Indigenous Food Lab. We have two main focuses. One is just creating access to Indigenous education, and one is creating access to Indigenous foods. So defining Indigenous education is just looking at all the knowledge our ancestors held and all this diverse knowledge that's out there of how to live really closely with our land and really create a relationship with all the plants and the land around us. So our goal is to just create these urban uh, support centers where we can do a lot of research and development, we can do a lot of training and development, we can work directly with tribal communities helping them to develop their own healthy food operations. So we're already actively working on extensions right now, so we're working on opening up food labs in Anchorage, Alaska, Bozeman, Montana, and Rapid City, South Dakota just to start with. I won the James Beard Award for Best American Cookbook in 2018. The biggest piece was removing colonial ingredients to showcase what we already had here. So we took away things like dairy, wheat flour, cane sugar, beef, pork, chicken, since none of those ingredients really existed on this continent at all. I did a lot of research just trying to understand how people were utilizing their food systems. What were they doing for preserving food? What kind of cooking techniques were they utilizing? What were they using for things like salts and fats and sugars? And what kind of proteins and fish and birds and wild plants and native heirloom varietals? And just really deep diving into, into the traditional ways that people were utilizing foods. We're not trying to cook like it's 1491, so we're trying to really showcase a path forward and evolving our, our food systems into something for the future. We chose to push against fry bread, and like I grew up with it too, but it's literally fried bread, so you know it does taste good, and you know it is celebrated, but we can have something better to showcase when it comes to what our true foods are. 
We're training a lot of people. We have a lot of chefs in our culinary team between our nonprofit kitchen and the restaurant space in general. And we just want to see a new generation of restaurateurs and leaders and chefs um, come out of this because there's just so much creativity that we can be pushing forward. And we just really wanted to create a support center out there that doesn't exist. You know, we want to see more indigenous food producers. We want to see more indigenous food entrepreneurs. We want to see tribes really take the necessary steps to bring back a lot of heritage and cultural foods back into their own communities. Make it more accessible, make it more known. Start to normalize seeing indigenous foods everywhere. We just really want to see a day where we can drive across North America stopping at indigenous run food businesses and experiencing the immense diversity that's out there and celebrating that diversity. You know, there'll be other chefs way more creative than me out there eventually and I want to see that world.